If there's one thing we can all rely on when it comes to playing Fortnite is that we can't rely on it at all. The game is always changing. There's new metas, new updates. These game changes can often make it even harder to improve. But that makes it even more important to stay on top of your game, right? One simple yet very important thing that anyone on controller or console can do is that they can use the right settings and right sensitivity. The advantage this gives you guys is huge. That's why a lot of times on YouTube you'll see a lot of sensitivity and settings videos because they do really help. They really, really do. But some are just not the best. So it's important, guys, to make sure that you're getting the most up-to-date settings from the most credible source possible. Okay, so here at Pro Guides, we're always making sure you're going to get the best of the best when it comes to pro tips and tricks. You can count on us, guaranteed. For even more advanced controller guides, guys, check out ProGuides.com. Find out where you can improve your controller skills with some of the game's best coaches on InstaPro. It really does work. And also, don't forget to drop a like if you like these type of videos. So what's up, everybody? This is your guy, Keith Allen. So excited to join you today. Make sure you follow me, connect with me on my Instagram. It is going down. So I'm really excited about today's video because I've been getting so many questions on my Insta regarding sensitivity. So this is what we're giving you guys. So sit back, listen. We got some cool stuff. So in this video today, we're going to be giving you guys the best settings, sensitivity, and dead zones for controller players to use while they play Fortnite. We analyzed many different pros like Ghost Aiden, Nick Merckx, Upshaw, and Ghost Innocence to get the best answers. We guarantee, guys, these settings are going to help you improve, and we'll explain why later in this video, so keep watching. So to start off, we're going to be talking about your graphic settings, okay? Graphic settings are responsible for how your game looks, and they have a great toll on your PC performance. So go ahead and turn all of your graphic settings on the lowest setting possible, but keep your view distance on Epic. What this will do is make it so that you can see as far as possible, therefore not affecting your gameplay. Turning down the rest of these graphic settings, <laughs> what they're going to do is they're going to maximize performance for whatever device you're using to play. For those of you that are on console, these settings are already adjusted based on the power that your device has. The next setting we're going to be talking about are Motion Blur and V-Sync. We recommend you keep both of these off. Motion Blur can cause lots of performance drops. It makes it so that your game becomes more blurry when there's movement. You get it? This isn't the best for when you're trying to take down opponents. V-Sync is a feature that is meant for people who have older monitors that screen tear when they cannot handle high frames. However, nowadays, most monitors have features to prevent this. Therefore, keeping it off will reduce load in your devices, resulting in a better performance. Okay, so now we're going to be going over to sensitivity settings on the next screen. The best sensitivities for controller players at the moment are the following. 0.675 for both X and Y sensitivities. Now for a controller targeting 0.320 and 0.360 for controller scoped. Building and editing speed should be a 2.0. All right, so let's do a quick breakdown on these sensitivities and why they're the best when combined together. The X and Y sensitivity is a perfect balance between slow and steady aim, while also being fast enough for a quick turning and fast building. The targeting sensitivity makes it easier for slow and accurate aiming when zooming in with weapons like the AR, SMG, and shotgun. The scope sensitivity is higher because with snipes, you're going to find yourself in sniper versus sniper scenarios. So being able to pull off fast flick shots with the snipe are a must. Okay, so now to the building and editing sensitivities, which is super important. I get asked this all the time. We suggest maximum speed for these guys, okay? So when it comes to building and editing, you always want to be able to do it fast as possible. So keeping this to the highest speed possible is going to allow you to build fast and edit fast. And how many of us want that? Everybody. This is going to equalize the playing field between controller and keyboard and mouse players. These optional settings that were added into Fortnite a couple of seasons ago were implemented to allow controller players to have a better chance at competing against keyboard players who have numerous advantages. Okay, we won't go into that because we all know why. For the settings below sensitivity, we suggest that you guys keep auto sprint on. But at the same time, put sprint cancels reload off so you don't get that mixed up. We'll get into why auto sprint is important once we get into controller keybinds. Tap to search plus interact is also a really good thing to keep on because it'll make it easier to heal teammates and open chest. Hold to swap pickup is better too to have on due to having an extra option for swapping weapons, essentially making it so players have to sort their weapons less. Toggle targeting should also be off due to resulting in less control over your targeting, which is crucial for controller players. Reset building choice isn't as important now that Epic has added Builder Pro, but it is important if you play on any controller layout besides that. Aim assist should always be on, of course, but make sure edit mode aim assist is off. Turbo building should also be on so that you can instantly place builds without having to click the place button multiple times. 
controller auto run should also be on. Now, for auto open doors, we definitely suggest to have it on. This may sound weird, guys, but it can make a world of difference during build fights if you accidentally edit a door instead of a wall opening edit. So, for vibration, we suggest that you just keep it off because it's just a distraction that can affect your gameplay in crucial moments. If you are someone that has problems with their performance, we also suggest that you just turn off all replays to maximize FPS and overall power. All right, so moving on to brightness. This really just depends on your monitor settings and how bright you prefer your game to look. We suggest keeping it bright enough so that you can just see everything really well, but not to the point where it's so bright you have a white tint on your screen and you're like, what game am I playing? In audio settings, the only thing we suggest for you guys to change is the game chat quality setting to high to improve multiplayer game chat. For colorblind and accessibility options, there are a few different things that you guys can do to optimize the game for effectiveness. One of these is setting your colorblind mode to Deuter and Ope, and then on 5 to be able to see players better through the storm. Turning on visualized sound effects is another option, but of course, these are all up to how competitive you want to play. Some people just play better without colorblind settings because they personally can just see better without them. But hey, at the end of the day, it's a free country. It's all up to you. So, as we reach keybinds for a controller, we can start talking about some smart changes that you can make to get an advantage over other controller players who don't know these tricks. First and foremost, okay, you want to set your keybinds to Building Pro and then customize them from there on. What we suggest is putting Edit on your left analog stick click. This is going to allow you to edit without taking your right thumb off of the aiming joystick, allowing for more efficient editing. Since you've done this, what's going to happen to your sprint button? Good question. Well, that's where Auto Sprint comes in. Remember when we told you that we're going to talk about this later on in the video? Well, I'm glad you stayed on because now we're about to. Keeping Auto Sprint on allows you to take the Sprint button off of your controller, which opens up an extra button for binding. So we also suggest putting your reset edit on right analog stick. Meanwhile, keep confirm on B or circle for PS4 players. This is going to allow you to double edit bind, which is a new way to edit much faster than ever before. Okay, so think of it this way, guys. If you have to click one button twice to do an action, when you can click two buttons simultaneously, you're going to essentially get a much faster edit. That's why many pros in the community have switched to double edit binds. Let's do this. Now, besides editing, what else should you change? Good question. We suggest binding an auto sprint to the unbound D-pad button that you have. This is just in case you ever need to auto run in order to do something else. Sometimes auto running can also be used to give your hands a break from long gaming sessions when you realize my hands don't work anymore. Especially if you're a player that plays claw. Claw can oftentimes tie your hands out and make you just feel so uncomfortable, especially if you're new to it. So be sure to keep a button for auto sprint just in case you ever need it. Now, for edit mode binds, you can add a crouch button so that you can use the crouch button to strafe while in edit mode. However, most of the time, the better option is just to jump during edit battles. This is because jumping moves your hitbox a lot more than just crouching, so using jump will benefit you more. We also don't have any binds for build mode, so you can just keep those as the default. Alright guys, now for dead zones. Dead zones, oh my goodness, are by far one of the most important aspects of controller aiming. Without good dead zones, it can be very hard to aim well. So, let's give you a quick breakdown of how they work. When you turn your dead zone down, your controller analog sticks are much more reactive to the even the smallest movements. So, if your dead zones are on 0.05, you could just expect very reactive and speedy aiming plus movement. This isn't always the best though. It can at times make your aim very jittery as more reactive than you need it to be. Now, <laughs> what about high dead zones? High dead zones make your controller analog sticks very unreactive, meaning you could just move your analog sticks halfway towards the edges of the circumference and your player still won't move or look around. So, now that you know what both high and low dead zones do, okay, well, what's better and why would you use one over the other? For some players, higher dead zones are necessary. This can be anything between 0.15 to 0.25. That's because their controllers have been overused and have developed an issue known as drift. Drift is where your play moves or turns without you touching your controller. So, if you have this problem, which I know I've had before, experiment with your dead zones, moving them up until your player doesn't move or aim on its own. If you have a relatively new controller with no drift, we suggest a dead zone of 0.10 on your left analog stick and 0.10 on your right analog stick. 0.10 seems to be the sweet spot for most players in terms of reaction speed. It's not too fast to cause jittery, yet it's not too slow to cause slower turning and aiming, making it the perfect dead zone for most controller players. So we've gone over every in-game setting in this video. You now know the best dead zones, settings, and sensitivity for maximum performance and competitive play.
using these on controller and console, hey, it's going to help you improve all your gameplays significantly. So we suggest that you do so right now. Be sure to go back in the video and copy all the settings we mentioned, guys. You got to just practice, practice, practice so that you're not missing anything. There's a lot to change, so make sure you paid attention during the video and consider watching it again if you need to. If I were you, I'd watch it over and over again. That's how we get better, that's how we get confidence, and that's how we start racking up some wins. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Once again, this is your guy, Keith Allen, and make sure to connect with me on my Instagram. Been enjoying all the conversations and the questions, man. Loving this community. Hey, uh, let us know if we missed anything, and once again, thanks for watching. We really appreciate all the support, and we'll see you next time.